You love that awkward pause when I start the recording, giving a little buffer, make sure everything is working okay. And now I have my headphones in. Now it sounds kind of strange, like I'm listening to my own self. Uh, welcome to uh, The Study. Welcome to Theologicus. My name is Joseph Louthan. I am your uh, host for today. Uh, I decided to start uh, today's uh, session a little bit early, uh, mostly due to work. If uh, we have an off time and an off, um, off moment, um, if we are a little bit late, a little bit early, it's mostly due to work. Let's just keep it all the way real. Um, that's by vocational life. What are you going to do? Anyway, I am uh, pleased as punch. Uh, couldn't wait until I was able to uh, record today. And now we're here. So actually, while I am talking and blabbing, I'm going to go ahead and take these out because I don't know. Uh, it's like I'm hearing myself, but I can't hear myself. So anyway, um, yeah, we got it recording. We're doing in turn off studio mode because that's a little distracting. All right. So um, now uh, as you have been following the channel. Um, let me just want to make the only uh, update I have is for today is that, okay, I'm in praying through and thinking about going from three days a week to five days a week. So it's stay tuned for that. I don't know how to really do the schedule that it would definitely be if I had to do it. Like if I had to decide right now, I would definitely do Romans three days a week and then do, uh, a day of meditations on a pastoral and then uh, family devotions. It's almost very similar to what I originally envisioned. Um, the one, the, uh, okay, so five days a week would be maxed out. And the reason why I say that is because I would not stream on the Sabbath. Uh, my Sabbath is from Friday evening to Saturday evening. And Sundays tends just to be a little bit busy. I have an in-home Bible study that I do uh, every Sunday night, going to church. And sometimes that's an all-day, the church is an all-day thing because I will like go to one service and then work kids and teach the kids on another service. So uh, Sunday may be a little bit, it may be a little bit much uh, between family commitments and stuff like that. So here we go. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, I'm mulling, contemplating over use of word meditations. You know, it's like, how do I do this when it's not really introspective and I'm not trying to be introspective. Uh, and meditations, that's a open word that you can make it, you make it use anything else. When I went to go back and I'm like reading and I'm writing, uh, and I just finished, oh, I'm actually really close to finishing all of first Timothy. I kind of realize it's like, what is the habit that, that I have in my own writing? Um, it's really preaching the gospel to yourself. And so uh, that's what uh, it's, this is what's kind of like first, second, uh, first, second Timothy and Titus is going to be is preaching gospel to yourself. And you're like, how did you do that? And there's excellent books out there. The one that comes off my top of my mind is Note to Self by um, Joe Thorne. Uh, so look that up. It's a really excellent book. It's just like, how do you, how do you stay in the gospel? How do you make your life gospel center? How do you, I mean, how do you like proclaim the gospel to every creature through, to the ends of the earth? We start with yourself. This is the gospel to me. It's that it, 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 it helps. It keeps your mind on God. It keeps your sights on God. It, uh, it avoids blame shaming, uh, blame shifting, uh, if you go back to Genesis three, the first thing that comes out of Adam's mouth when he sins, when God approaches him, what does he say? Oh, it was the woman that you created for me. I blame her. And it's like, that's not even necessary. Um, uh, and I, w I would even suggest like a lot of the times, like when you hear what, I mean, let me back up a little bit for us to judge a person's repentance and judging my own repentance. It's sometimes hard to do when you don't know what you're looking for. And uh, I always found a real good litmus test is like, are they committing the sins of our original father? Are they, 
um, are they trying to blame other people for their own sins? When in fact, it's like, yeah, I, I understand their circumstances. There is trauma and abuse and all that. And I get that. And I've gone through that myself. So I'm not trying to make light of that. But in the end, my actions, my sins against anybody that I've hurt in the past, those are mine. I'll, I will be accountable for those. Uh, I will let God sort everything out, but those are my sins. Here's the gospel. The gospel truth is that because I have trusted Jesus Christ and he is my Lord and Savior, then first things first, my sins belong to him. Just there. And that's why First John calls us to be quick to, to, to confess. If we are quick to confess, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So be quick about it. Don't don't wallygag. Don't sit on it. Um, I want to give you like, and again, we're talking it in the in the same vein of preaching the gospel to yourself. Uh, it was about over a little a little over a year ago. And I lost my brother to cancer, and I've shared the story uh, in real life, so this is nothing new. Uh, I actually got to do the eulogy at his church and I got to do the eulogy in a Mormon church, right? It was just a few days later I succumbed to like looking at porn. And there's nobody to blame. Not because my brother passed away. None of that. That does that's, think about that. It doesn't make any sense. And the way that was on my back for that sin, for my sin, was backbreaking. And I didn't get freedom until I confessed that. I confessed that to the Lord. I confessed that to my wife, my mentor, my everybody. And by God's grace, I've been sober for over a year. Uh, but it was, I don't know. I, I can go on and on about like, you know, what was God doing in that in year beforehand was instrumental. And I think it was, it was like this moment of, choose on this day of whom you will serve. Uh, 2019 was like, for me was a, uh, a one of holiness and repentance. And that all came, it was like, is God doing this in my life? Then comes 2020, uh, the beginning of the pandemic, everything, my brother passing away from colon cancer, a couple years younger than me. Uh, and is that, did God actually, instill in me give me the gift of repentance did he actually do that we'll see and he put that to the test and uh, by god's grace i was able to confess um confess your sins be quick about it don't blame anybody else just do it so let's go let's go get into this uh so we have meditations also uh i'm working now i need some kind of visual cue to like where am i at what am i doing uh, I've worked on spreadsheets and like kind of keeping track of what I've written and I'm pointing to the plot, the, the blog, what have I recorded or what have I streamed and recorded? And so I put a little TV here. Uh, if I have recorded this, uh, you know, there's an episode here. And so if you see this, chances are, and this is not an automated process, chances are you will see, uh, a media link down here. Now you don't see one right now because we're kind of recording that but i have all this ready to go got a process the process is not that hard um of like recording a little bit of editing uploading and just uh keep it on keep it on so um anyway so like every every time we're gonna start off with prayer uh father god um in this moment right now take your scriptures that have been inspired by and breathed out by you uh, to show us um, how do we keep our eyes and affections upon you. And God, we're going to need you to do that in our hearts so that we can keep turning back to you, that we can keep um, longing after you. Um, you're the, you're our, all in all, there's no one else but you. You alone have the words to eternal life. So God, just keep us, save us, per persevere us till the end. We love you so much. In your son's name I pray, amen. So, preaching gospel, meditations upon 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. Christ is our salvation. And this is in the CSB, but if I go off script a little bit, uh, as far as like reading the verse, it's because I memorized it in the ESV. So, um, 
I'm real excited about today. I really love this passage. I hope you do too. Uh, and I'm praying, praying, praying that you would elect and choose to memorize this. It's, it's like, it's, it, the amount of like just the mind changing and the heart softening, uh, from this passage has just been amazing when you just meditate on it and focus in on it. So here we go. First Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, appointing me to, whoa, appointing me to the ministry. Even though I was a formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and an arrogant man, but I received mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the worst of them, but I have received mercy for this reason, so that in me, as the worst of them, Christ Jesus might dis- demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, I, I, usually I'm, I would walk through a passage like line by line, um, in some of the, I'll, I'll tell you some of the language that the ESV used. Give me a second. Um, uh, where, where Paul points out, even though I was a formerly a blasphemer, persecutor, and an arrogant man, um, in the, in e, ESV, uh, they had translated the arrogant man uh, turns it into uh, uh, an insolent opponent. Insolent meaning violent opponent. Here's what we need to realize as every single one of us, and I always say this, born of Adam, every one of us, if you're listening to this podcast, you too are born of Adam. Uh, what does that mean? We are descendants of the original father and original mother. What that also means, according to Romans 5, starting in verse 12, that we are born to die. Uh, we are born in sin. And we're, we're not just guilty of the sin that we are born into by default, but we're also guilty of the sins that we have committed and the good things we failed to commit, right? So... Uh, you got to keep all of that in perspective. Um, here's, I say all that, and I don't want to proclaim and teach as though uh, we've got to super focus on how bad we are in order to realize how good God is. But I, I'm, I, you don't need to do that continuously, and I'm not here to pop, you know, Pump up your self-esteem. I'm not here for that. But what I will say is that first and foremost, God is good. And he's good all the time. And yeah, we have strayed. Yeah, we were born in sin. And yeah, we were wicked. But if you believe and trust and obey God and repent of your sins and, and obeyed what the gospel calling is all about, then you are made righteous with him. You are made holy you're made pure with god that's the only way god you know you want god to save his people god's going to save his people and he's done so at the cross of christ yet uh there is there there's not there's there's not a uh a failure to do so there is not a failure of god to save his people when jesus went upon the cross when he gave his life over that that salvation was complete and done. How that gets worked out, well, we yet to see. But what was so great about the salvation of the people of God, the salvation of us, those who would call ourselves Christians, those who, are, who would call ourselves disciples of uh, Christ, um, that 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 works out. That works itself out over time. And it's not really straightforward. And you can't predict what's going to happen. Uh, Christ in John 3 compares the work of the Holy Spirit, the saving work of the Holy Spirit, compares that to the wind. You see where the wind blows um, by the trees, how the trees move. But you can't in itself see wind. Um, 
keep all that in mind. And here's here is the thing. This is what what's I'm gonna I I was trying to avoid walking through this, but I've got to now. I've got I I love this passage so much. I'm just gonna do it. Um, so first and foremost, let's give thanksgiving. I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, considered me faithful and appointed me to the ministry. Guess what? This is you. This is not just Paul. Um, I know that there are teachers out there that which is like, oh, this is just Paul. And you know what? I link this up with the rest of the great commission and I, those are all intertwined. It, God, Christ has commissioned each of us to proclaim the gospel to every creature to the end of the world, right? That's that that's biblical. That's that's a mandate from God. Okay, so we, we take that seriously. Well, how do we do that? Well, let me first give thanks to him because he's strengthened me. He's considered me faithful because he he gives us his faith. That is a gift from God. In order for us to believe in him. He must give us the faith. He must give us his heart and his spirit in order that we believe in him and trust in him, have faith in him, and and, and pointing me to this ministry. What is the ministry? The ministry is building up of, of the church. It's building up of one another. Um, even though, even though I was a formerly a blasphemer, persecutor, and arrogant man. Now, this is Paul writing this. If you're following me in the Romans, if you look at the the, the Second video, second or third video I did on the Roman series is Paul, Romans 1-1, was just about Paul. The point in all that is that it doesn't matter where you have came, come from. It doesn't matter what sins you have committed, the, 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 the darkest places in your life and, and what you have seen. And also the flip of that, it doesn't matter what has been done to you. All the sins that have been committed against you. It's all of that. While we're yet sinners. Romans 5 eight, In God's love. While we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. It goes on. But I received mercy. I received mercy. Because I had acted out of ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me. Along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you something with some of the things that if you actually start doing ministry, if you actually start paying attention and being mindful of the time, being a, pay, paying attention to in walking in discipleship with one another, uh, acted out of ignorance and unbelief. I can't tell you how many people have in their lives right at this moment that, and, and I did the same thing. Uh, assume that we're saved because we went to church, uh, said some kind of prayer, uh, but there's nothing in our lives that would indicate there's a change between the old way and the new way. Romans 8, starting at verse 4, there's those who um, who seek after the Spirit walk in the Spirit. Those who seek things after the flesh walk in the flesh. There is a, a bifurcation in two lives. It is black and white. It is, it's not that there's some kind of muddle area uh, that's God's generic grace or something. It is actually, if you have the spirit, you walk in the spirit. If you are, uh, don't have the spirit, you're walking in the flesh. You're walking in after those sins. And part of that is like with the ignorance and unbelief. Like we just don't know that we don't believe. Uh, but again, every time that I get on this mic, I'm asking you, the listener, do you believe? Do you trust? Look at your life. Is it dramatically different? Can you see God's work in you? Can you see the sanctification of Christ in you? If you can't, then that's that's a that's a conversation for you, between you and God. That's a conversation. You're just like you can pray, Lord, and it's like, Lord, have you saved me? Am I saved? And you'd be surprised if God doesn't speak to you back. So, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. The King James will say, I am the chief of sinners. And I will, over this time, I, we don't got time for me to lay out all the sins I've ever committed in my life. It is a mile long, a mile deep. It is like, it's endless. Like, my sin's outweigh the drops in the ocean but yet christ covers all of that and 
and so in that response is I receive mercy for this reason, so that in me, as the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Listen, I, there are people that you're praying for. There are people that God, you say, Lord, would you please save them? Would you please save them? They used to go to church, used to proclaim your name, they're walked away, or they just never know, never known God, don't care to know, don't give a rip, you know, say, I believe in God, but yeah, there's nothing in their life that changes. Um, listen, where they are at now is not where they're going to end up at. That's God's extraordinary patience. His kindness to us was meant for our repentance. And this is to everybody who would believe in him for eternal life. To the king of ages, immortal, invincible, be the only God forever and ever. Amen. So, in here is the meditation. Here's where I want you to focus and concentrate on. Is yeah, so let's start out with another Pauline uh, passage, Titus 3, starting in verse 3. I, again, this is another passage I, I deeply love, deeply cuts into my life. This is gospel to me. This is preaching the gospel to me. It's memorizing this passage. For we too, and this is in CSB, so I may not, again, I memorize this in the ESV, but encourage, please memorize this. For we too, me, were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another, or in the CSB, detesting one another. But when the kindness of our God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. What? Not by works of righteousness that we have done. We have not done anything that would say ourselves, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, he poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified, justified by his grace, we have become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. We mentioned this before. Let's do it again. Are you alive? If you're born you're born and you're like, you know, a baby and you're crying, your blood is puffing, you have air in your lungs, you grow up. Are you actually alive? Are you, do you define life by and living by the fact that your, your mind is, is thinking, you have air in your lungs, your, your heart is pumping blood? Let's read Ephesians. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air and the spirit now working in disobedience. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under the wrath of the others were also. But guess what? But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You were saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, he might display his immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. And listen, you want to get into the bogging down of the Greek and whatever. What is God's gift? Is God's gift salvation? Is it grace? Is it faith? Guess what? Yes. The answer is yes. Is it salvation? Is it grace? Is it faith? What? Which of those are gift? The answer is yes. Uh, so now no one can boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared a, ahead of time for us to do that last part in verse 10. Uh, what does that mean? Like all the good, once you are saved, once you believe, once your heart gets changed out, once the spirit indwells in you, and this is all happening at the same time. Once your mind starts renewing, once you are fully alive, First John 5, 1, once you are fully alive, well, guess what? Um, you get to do good works. And all those good works are planned out by God ahead of time for you to do. 
God commissioned us, God gives us power, gives empowers us, gives us grace to do his will, and he laid out all the ministry for you to do. All you've got to do is just obey. Lay down your life and obey. Last but not least, least but not last, Luke 18, 9 through 14. He also told this parable. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that we were they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went into up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee were standing and praying something like this about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterous, and even like this tax collector, I fast twice a week. I give tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes to heaven and kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. What did Jesus say? And I tell you that this one went down to his house justified rather than the other. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but everyone who humbles himself will be exhausted. And let me tell you something, folks. I live in a place and in time where they theologically and doctrinally they would say the tax collector is justified but their actions says that they live like the pharisee they still they still pray as though they had something to do with their own righteousness and if that's you i pray that god just gri- grips your heart Because the more time you're wasting in your own self-righteousness, the further you are departing away from God. So here's my prayer. This is a prayer for myself. Fill in where you need to. My Savior, Lord God, I was astray. I was coaxed by the world, deceived by Satan, corrupted by sin, hater of mankind, and at war with you. I have nothing in me. My spirit was dead. My soul was blemished. My heart was full of death. My sins could fill the galaxies. My wickedness covered the earth. I was prideful, arrogant, full of stupidity, and surely I would have perished. But you appeared, came not to condemn, but to save a wretch like me. And when you spoke my name, you called me to come and die with you. You beckoned me to come and live in you. I was the chief sinner. But you have made me a sweet lover because you are my beloved and I am yours forever. So, Lord, make my life a living testimony to all of those who would say they have gone too far, done too many bad things, called themselves unlovable, that my words and actions would proclaim the loudest. You are God who loves. You are the God who reigns. And you are God who has more mercy, who has grace upon grace and has steadfast love that never, never ceases. So you're the king of my heart, my lot, my portion, my life, my joy, my pleasures, my satisfaction, my God, my Christ, my spirit, my heart, my love, my all in all. Jesus, you are the lamb who was slain. Worthy is your name forever. Amen. Be back in a couple of days. I think it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a little bit early. I have a church function to go to. Uh, be back in a couple of days. Uh, we're going to do family devotions in Mark. It's going to be Mark chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Later.